Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9, it reads, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all aspects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Good day. This is Kirk Brothers, and I welcome you to Ministry Matters That Matter. In my office, you if you come to visit, you will find on the side of one of my cabinets where I see it when I sit at my desk, you will see an old school slate. It's basically a, a personalized small chalkboard for those of you that remember the chalkboard days at our schools. And it was used in schools, you know, 100 years ago as their writing tablet, their notebook, their original iPads. And I have it in my office mounted to the side of a cabinet with an inscription or literally it's just a laminated piece of paper that says never stop learning. The reason I have that there is I am a big believer in leaders having a culture of learning. Now, let me share with you what we're going to talk about in this episode and the next episode. They grow out of experiences or questions that were asked of me. So I teach biblical leadership at Heritage Christian University. And in one of my recent classes, we were having a discussion about leadership in churches. And the discussion turned to that many struggle to be the leaders that they could be or should be because no one has ever trained them in how to be a leader. So we've got a number of congregations where you've got preachers or youth ministers who have degrees in Bible from places like Heritage Christian or other places. They went to a preaching school or a four-year university. They've got graduate degrees. But you've got preachers, in addition to preachers, you've got elders, you've got deacons who are working in congregations, and often those preachers who have several degrees may be working for elders who have degrees in other fields, like they may have a finance degree, which allows them to work at the local bank. They may have certain training, mentoring experience that allows them to be amazing in agriculture, but they've never really had any training in how to be a leader for God. No one's mentored them. They've not really had any training. And it creates some problems when we don't have a culture of learning. So I just want you to think about that whole concept of a culture of learning, of feeling like I have arrived in a place where I don't need to learn anything else. You should think about that statement from Colossians chapter 1. Paul says, I want you to be filled with knowledge so that you can increase in knowledge. For Paul, there was no stopping point. We just keep growing. We just keep learning as we're in that process of being transformed into the image of Jesus from day unto day. I think about Jesus spent, estimates are a year and a half to three years training the apostles. But then I look, for example, in places like John chapter 16, and he says that he is going to send the spirit of truth who is also going to disclose things to them. In other words, Jesus trained them, but he was going to spend the whole, send the Holy Spirit to train them some more. You even go to Acts chapter 1 in the first four verses. It says, after his resurrection, he stayed 40 days proving to them he was raised by many convincing proofs and talking to them about the kingdom of God. He was still teaching them. And then the Spirit would come in, and he would keep on teaching them. I think of Acts chapter 20, verses 17 and following, where Paul meets with the elders of the church at Ephesus. These are men who are already elders. But in that gathering in Miletus, he talks to them about how to be a good elder. Those elders did not believe that they had learned it all, that they had arrived at a point where they did not need to learn anymore. Learning has to be a part of the DNA of leadership. 
So here at Heritage Christian University, for example, in a typical year, our leadership team, our advisory council, will read on average four books together about leadership and higher education. So for example, we've got four reading this year. One of the ones we recently read is The Speed of Trust by Stephen Covey. Canoeing the Mountains is the last one. We're going to be reading Essential and Little Prince coming up in the next little bit. We understand that we have to keep on learning. When I meet with leaders, whether it's church leaders or leaders in the business world, when I interact with donors who run companies, I ask them, what are you reading? What are you learning from? What do you recommend I read or listen to? I do a lot of audio learning. I listen to books as I travel around. I do a lot of listening to the Bible, but I also do a a lot of listening to books. Just recently, I had a meeting with one of our investment managers for the investing of our funds that have been donated by our donors that are in endowments. And so those funds are important to supporting our students and helping us to continue to do what we do. So I actually asked this investment and financial expert, give me a book that I can read to help me learn more about the stock market and finances because I want to do a better job in my role at Heritage Christian. So here you go, Stocks for the Long Run. Would have loved a little thinner book, but I asked, and so he gave this to me, and so I'll be reading it. Leaders have to have a culture of learning. So I want to challenge, if you're an elder and you're watching this, do you have a culture of learning in your own life? Do you have a culture of learning in the congregation? Preachers, youth minister, I don't care what your work is. Are you a deacon? Are you a Bible class teacher? Are you a personal evangelist who's sharing the gospel with people? Do we have a culture of learning? Is there a DNA of learning in our congregations and in our lives? I would encourage every congregation to have regular yearly workshops. The churches that I've been a part of, here's some things that we have done. I think about several congregations I worked with. We had an annual leadership retreat every year, and it was not uncommon during those retreats that we would read something in advance of it. We would have some discussions about what we learned. We'd spend some time in God's Word related to what we should be doing as God's people. Then we'd do some dreaming and so forth towards the future. So I would encourage you, if your congregation does not have a leadership retreat and you can decide who needs to be in that, I would encourage you to do that. I have, it's been very common in congregations I've worked with for the elders, deacons, and preachers to read something together, even if it's not part of a retreat. And so we're reading something together about leadership. Congregations I've been a part of, we would regularly have workshops. So every year I want workshops. It may be a leadership workshop. It may be a how to be a better Bible class teacher workshop. It may be how to be more effective in personal evangelism as a workshop. It may be how to be a better parent, et cetera, et cetera. We need to create a culture of learning. And I think if your leadership will get in the habit of going to workshops together, identifying them, going them to them together, bringing in people to educate them, have a regular leadership retreat every year, your leadership reading things together. Not everybody reads. Well, a lot of these books are available on audio. So you might listen to something together. You might watch something that has been produced on YouTube. A lot of our church conferences that deal with a wide variety of topics, they're available by video, they're available by audio, so we can access them long after the event has completed. I just want to challenge you in whatever context you lead and serve in the Lord's church to ask yourself, do I have in my own life a culture of learning And does this congregation have a culture of learning? Because when elders, deacons, Bible class teachers, preachers, youth ministers, missionary, when we are no longer willing to learn, then we're no longer following the biblical pattern of leadership. In Scripture, Jesus, Paul, it doesn't matter who you read, There was no concept of a status quo. I have arrived, and I don't need to grow anymore, and I don't need to learn anymore. Remember, never stop learning. 